Professor Professor Gabriel Bogon from Italy will present also a present paper in accordance with the previous two. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, for your presentation. Um, so, uh, what I'm going to uh, introduce to you is uh, this part of uh, uh, this work, uh, which has been uh, uh, carried out without, within uh, this uh, uh, project, uh, which is funded by NATO and which is an Italian-Ukrainian uh, project, uh, which uh, concerns mainly the safety of the gas transportation system in Ukraine, but uh, which has uh, um, uh, much uh, wider interest, I think, uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, um, Europe in particular. Uh, so in, I will give you a, a, a brief introduction of what can be uh, the relevance of this kind of investigation um, in the present uh, European situation. Uh, I will present to you a possible uh, approach to the diagnostic uh, uh, monitoring of pipelines uh, by non-destructive testing, testing uh, an approach uh, which is complementary to what uh, Professor Nikki Forching has introduced so far. Uh, I will uh, um, show you uh, a few preliminary results about uh, a validation study of this uh, uh, methodology, and then I will close uh, my talk. Uh, so um, in, in this picture, we see the wide uh, uh, network of pipelines uh, which supply uh, gas uh, to Europe. These are clearly the main lines. Um, uh, the supply source, uh, uh, gas supply source in, in, uh, uh, in uh, Europe uh, mainly comes either from uh, uh, the northern uh, countries uh, of Africa, uh, where the environmental conditions are quite peculiar, or uh, they come uh, from uh, the um, uh, former, for the country of the former Soviet U Union, and uh, um, a huge amount of gas uh, comes to Europe through uh, Ukraine, which is the reason of this uh, project, uh, which has uh, more than 25,000 kilometers pipe, uh, but uh, more or less half of these are more than uh, 30 years old, uh, which is a critical age, uh, as I've seen, uh, for several kind of, of damaging uh, uh, sources. So the relevance of, of the problem uh, of the damaging of uh, pipelines uh, in Europe is quite high. Um, these uh, two graphs uh, show that, uh, well, in Europe, uh, uh, in the next uh, um, dozen years, 10 years, uh, well, uh, almost 20% of the expenditure are devoted to gas pipelines. And uh, in the next few years, uh, uh, the investment will be of several dozen uh, billion uh, euro per year. Uh, then, well, um, the situation should, should be more or less fixed, uh, but then uh, in 2020 and beyond, uh, then the situation may evolve uh, uh, further, because as we have listened also this morning, uh, there are projects, and I've seen that uh, already implemented, uh, to use uh, the existing uh, uh, gas transportation lines also to um, um, uh, storage uh, to store hydrogen and uh, to get energy from uh, um, renewable sources. Um, uh, if uh, we look to the literature, and uh, well, uh, this morning I, I listen to all the results which are consistent with this, so a lot of attention has been paid, especially to the embrittlement which is induced in metals by the presence of hydrogen in several applications. Uh, however, what uh, uh, is, uh, uh, has been uh, what appears uh, uh, usually is that uh, the reduction of ductility is usually accompanied also with uh, the change of other mechanical properties, uh, for instance, uh, the uh, material strength, the yield limits. And uh, um, these uh, um, material properties uh, can be usually inferred by techniques which are simpler, which may be simpler uh, than those uh, which are uh, traditionally used for, uh, for getting this sort of uh, diagrams, which relies, as we've seen already, uh, also this morning or either compact test or uh, uh, tensile specimens which are cut and, uh, and, man and machined from, from the thickness of the, of the pipe wall. 
I refer in particular to uh, indentation test and especially instrument indentation test. Um, what we see here are the results which can be obtained in uh, X60 uh, pipeline steel uh, in uh, two different conditions, uh, in the S received and uh, in an artificially degraded uh, state uh, which has been produced uh, um, by uh, Professor Nikki Fortune Group. Uh, what we see in this graph is that while well, there are two families of curves, there is some dispersion, uh, which is, however, expected since, uh, as uh, you see, we are going to um, um, uh, um, involve a, a small volume of, of uh, materials, uh, so the, the penetration depth of the indenter tip uh, is uh, some 60 microns. Uh, however, well, uh, the, the, you cannot see here, so the, 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 the volume which is uh, interested by indentation is large enough uh, to consider this test uh, representative of uh, the uh, bulk material properties. And as I was saying, uh, uh, there are uh, two uh, families of curves uh, which are clearly distinct, uh, uh, which concern the um, uh, as received and uh, the degraded conditions. So indentation test is not able to uh, reveal changes in uh, um, uh, rupture, uh, elongation, but uh, uh, reflects clearly other material properties like strength and yield limits. And, uh, um, and it has been proven in, in former study um, which were also um, carried out uh, together with uh, colleagues from uh, any group, uh, that uh, um, uh, you can uh, rely on, on a system like this one, where there is uh, one indenter, uh, which, can be, uh, which is a tool which can be applied directly on, on the pipe on site, and um, uh, you can recover directly, so before, uh, without uh, cutting any kind of specimen, uh, for instance, uh, the, the, the so-called indentation curves that we've seen already in the former slide, and uh, with a small tool like this one, uh, possibly, you can also detect uh, the full geometry of uh, the imprint, uh, which is left on the material surface. And the farmer study has shown that, that uh, if we couple this experimental output uh, with uh, a, a suitable simulation of this test, uh, then we can infer what are the material parameters uh, with higher accuracy and reliability. So uh, the former study concerned uh, the standard steel, and uh, the, the, the typical load levels was uh, um, two kilonewton maximum load. Um, this is a very fast approach, uh, and uh, the idea is that, uh, well, uh, to, um, uh, to use this kind of uh, monitoring tool to take measurement uh, time to time, and then to infer what can be the evolution of the material properties in time, uh, to be able to um, uh, design uh, uh, the, the right intervention times for, uh, for structural retrofitting uh, without having to pay, to pay too much, but at the same time so to avoid uh, um, disasters, possible disasters. Disasters. So, um, in this phase, uh, we are going to check uh, whether um, this uh, kind of, uh, of uh, approach uh, is suitable also for uh, the kind of uh, um, uh, change of material properties uh, which occurs in um, um, degradation of pipeline steels. Uh, here we see another experiment, uh, example of experiment car carried out this time on X60 steel. Uh, so these are the result of tensile tests, uh, which uh, were performed on a tensile sample um, um, from, from the pipe wall. Uh, well, uh, um, as we can see, there are uh, one main variation which is usually looked at, which is uh, the, the reduction in ductility and in elongation. But uh, uh, well, so there is also a significant change in, uh, in the material strength. And uh, as in the former uh, X60 case, uh, then again we see two distinct uh, families of curves uh, concerning the as received and uh, the age state, uh, and again penetration depth, uh, which have the order of 60 uh, micrometers. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the system becomes effective if we have a model which permits us uh, to infer from this uh, information what is uh, the, the uh, change of material properties clearly without having to uh, perform the uniaxial test contemporarily. Uh, so in our verification study, what we did so far was to build up a, a finite element model of uh, uh, the test, uh, which uh, was similar to what we did uh, um, um, 
validate already in former study. And then uh, we perform a simulation feeding uh, the, uh, the, the, the material characteristic with uh, the uh, result which we obtain at a let's say, macroscopic scale from the Excel test. Uh, what we see in this graph is the comparison between uh, the mean uh, experimental values, which are given by the blue curves, uh, and uh, the comparison of the simulations, which are the black curves. As you can see, yes, I, I'm all, almost finished. Uh, what you can see is that, uh, well, there is a really good, um, uh, a fairly good uh, um, correspondence between these two, uh, uh, despite the fact that uh, we are using, uh, we are working at different scale, and therefore, again, confirming that uh, this test, even at this relatively low level, uh, to 100 Newton maximum load, already gives uh, uh, information which are consistent with the bulk material properties that you can uh, uh, receive from more uh, sophisticated testing. Uh, the next step of our work uh, will uh, be to check whether, also in this case, uh, we will be able to uh, measure with the tools that uh, uh, we can uh, use at the present time, uh, also the information which concern uh, the uh, geometry of the residual imprint. Uh, this would be really interesting, both from the reason that uh, the um, prediction that can be obtained from this uh, um, kind of experimental output uh, becomes uh, more accurate and, and reliable, and also by the fact that, uh, well, uh, this kind of information can uh, be uh, recovered by simple hardness test, uh, therefore without any need uh, to control uh, the, uh, the load uh, which is applied to the indenter tip uh, during, the, uh, during the test. Uh, so, uh, to conclude, uh, what we are uh, doing here is that uh, uh, to try to, uh, to check on uh, um, uh, typical pipeline steels in, uh, uh, in different degraded state, uh, whether if this uh, methodology, which has been uh, already validated in different conditions, is uh, um, applicable. Um, we, are, uh, we, have, we, are also, uh, we have also reduced the load level at which the former validation study was performed, and this uh, will clearly be a, 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 an added value for uh, um, uh, repeated uh, on-site uh, applications. And uh, at the end, uh, we believe that uh, also hydrogen-exposed structure uh, can benefit uh, from this kind of diagnostic tool, especially in those cases uh, which I've uh, listened this morning, uh, where the bulk material properties uh, may lead, the change in the bulk material properties can lead to failure much before any crack uh, will appear on the component. And uh, with this, I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any questions? Please? Yes, sir. One question, like uh, looking at the non-indentation results. Yeah. You see, you see that the, the degree is natural for both UPS and your strands, uh, the increase. What's the reason for that? Uh, well, um, uh, this uh, will likely depend on, on the kind of uh, um, um, uh, aging uh, and damaging process uh, which have been introduced in this case uh, artificially on the material. So what we did, we just received uh, these uh, two, two sample of materials which were the same, uh, the same steel, mm, uh, artificially aged, and uh, we just uh, performed the test. And what we saw is that independently of the, of the mechanism, uh, which can be, for instance, a reduction of strength uh, if we are working at a low temperature, or an increase of strength, like in this case, uh, then in any case, uh, uh, yes, uh, the, the, the coupling with uh, these simulation models uh, allow you to get uh, the, the, the important uh, uh, changes in material parameters, which, as a matter of fact, uh, are those which are main concern of uh, uh, structural engineers like, like I am. May I ask something? Sure. In accordance to the question of Professor Song, uh, you mentioned that when we have a very long life of components exposed to different corrosion process, including uh, evolution of hydrogen and everything else, we must take into the consideration the aging of material. So uh, we must divide uh, uh, the effects of aging on micromechanical properties measurable one, which is uh, uh, typical uh, for estimation of hydrogen effect, and on the other side, the effects of hydrogen. 
Uh, from your point of view, what are the most critical uh, micro-mechanical properties which we should measure during uh, uh, overhaul, during uh, maintenance, in order to reveal the true effect of hydrogen in such type of steels and this particular application? No, in, in this case, we are not going to uh, reveal the source of the damaging. So we are just going to reveal with a, a, a very fast, uh, non-destructive technique, uh, which something is going on on the material. Mm -hmm. Therefore, what, uh, what is the reason, and uh, something which is going on on the bulk material properties. So what are the reasons behind that uh, will require a more deeper <coughs> investigation. So the basic idea here is that that, uh, as uh, Giovanna Gabetta was saying, uh, sometimes you just uh, have the feeling that something is going wrong, and in this case, uh, then you can simply take uh, samples and then uh, perform a much, uh, much uh, say more sophisticated investigation, which is the only way to, to be able to, to sort out what is the, the origin of that. But when they are taking uh, the, the sample, uh, these sort of techniques uh, can help you saying, uh, the material properties are more or less stable, or the material properties are going to change with time, with some rate, and then work to decide when it is the time to either to replace the material, if uh, uh, something is going wrong uh, very fast, or to make a deeper investigation to understand what is the reason for that. Okay, all techniques, in my opinion, have to be uh, used uh, together. So, uh, mm. for instance, this kind of techniques will not be able to reveal uh, um, uh, localized corrosion phenomena, which are also uh, dangerous. Additional question by Professor Curtin, please. Um, you mentioned, uh, <coughs> excuse me, using indentation is, is non-destructive. Yeah. Of course, it doesn't destroy the material, but do you have any sense that you create an indent in a plastic zone? Could serve as a source of uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, as I was saying, uh, this is was uh, uh, the main concern, uh, which was uh, uh, done especially by our industrial partners uh, when we validated the, the, the technique for uh, a, a few years ago. And as a matter of fact, to, 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 to reply to this question, what we decided, decided to do uh, is, uh, for instance, uh, I didn't comment, but what uh, we are using here is uh, a, a rockwell indent, and therefore it is uh, conical, but with a rounded tip. And uh, uh, in, in this preliminary study, which were carried out at 1.2 thousand uh, um, uh, newton load, then the, the, the indenter was, the, the material was uh, indented, and then there have been uh, some uh, micro-mechanical investigation and to see whether any, any effect was going on. Uh, there is nothing happening. And as a matter of fact, it is common practice also to perform hardened tests to check whether the material is in a good shape or not. We are doing uh, anything else than uh, doing an ardent test on this material. Beside that, we are also, as I was saying, you, going to reduce very much the, the load compared to what uh, is usually induced in ARDES. Therefore, in any situation where hardness tests are used, we are not doing anything more, uh, more complex than that. And for this kind of, of materials, uh, this is fine. Again, uh, I was uh, pointed out that the penetration depth is some 60 microns, which means that the, 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 the overall uh, depth of the material, which may be really sensitive to this, uh, could be 0.2 millimeters, mm, which is something that uh, usually, unless the material has already problem, but usually visible problem, does not, uh, is, not, is not a reason for, uh, uh, for, uh, for, into, for inducing uh, um, uh, pro, um, defects. We also avoided, for instance, to use vicus uh, indent indentation, which is uh, um, uh, pyramidal, which is used in different contexts. So with due careful uh, 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 approaches, uh, I believe that is really safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just to tell you something, if there is some additional questions related to the previously presented papers, we have enough time for some additional questions. Okay. Uh, just to introduce that the next session 
will be related to hydrogen embrittlement modeling. Chairperson is Professor Curtin, Mekin Weary, and Professor Taketomi from Japan. We will start at uh, four o'clock after the lunch, and we will have uh, six uh, presenters. Of course, uh, two invited lectures. Uh, Professor Song from Canada first, and next one Zilian Zhang from Norway. So we have two invited talks and four regular talks. I wish you a good lunch and see you again at four o'clock.